anyone who shoots underwater will know just how painful it is when you've invested thousands of dollars into underwater camera equipment and for the first time in months you've decided to set your rig up to shoot macro. You jump in the water and almost immediately you see a train of manta rays swimming overhead or you encounter your first great white or tiger shark and there you are unable to capture this once in a lifetime moment as you decided to shoot macro. It's a story as old as underwater photography itself. But what if I told you there are solutions available to shoot both wide angle and macro on the same lens? Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Tom Park and I'm an underwater and wildlife cinematographer. Throughout this series, we're discussing the world of filmmaking and cinematography, where I'll teach you some of the things that I've learned over the last decade working as an underwater and wildlife cinematographer. If you're interested in this sort of thing, subscribe and let me know down below what you film and what the best shot you've missed is due to having the wrong lens. It's good to talk about this stuff as I guarantee no matter where you are in your personal journey, you're not alone. To provide a quick bit of background, I do have entire videos on this, but just quickly, Underwater filmmakers and photographers are far more limited in lens choice than topside shooters. Underwater, we cannot use medium or telephoto lenses due to the fact that we're shooting through water with drastically reduced visibility and increased particle. And we additionally suffer from loss of light information over vertical and horizontal distances. Underwater, anything tighter than approximately 20 to 24 millimeters usually gives off a very dirty and unclean looking image with reduced sharpness, contrast and color due to the distances we have to shoot from to properly compose our image. Essentially, we have to physically get as close to our subject as possible underwater, and we can't rely on zoom lenses or tighter lenses to close that gap for us. The closer we are, the better quality our shot is, as we are removing a lot of that dirty water from our image. This is why underwater shooters always shoot with ultra wide angle lenses, around 10 to 16 millimeters full frame equivalent, or alternatively, shoot macro. Thus, we are almost always shooting at extreme ends of the optical focal spectrum. With ultra wide angle, which allows us to capture footage of large subjects like whales, sharks, turtles, or reefscapes, or on the other end of the spectrum, macro, which allows us to capture close-up footage of some of the ocean's tiniest critters. And as we cannot change lenses underwater, and the act of changing lenses and re-waterproofing our camera is a relatively long task, Whichever option we choose to jump in, we are stuck with for the duration of the shoot. This leads to frustrating moments when we set up on wide angle where it is extremely hard to capture a range of shots from different focal lengths to cover one scene effectively, such as capturing a wide, medium and tight shot for each scene. But this is even more restrictive when we set up our rig with a macro lens, as we are truly limiting ourselves to only being able to capture shots of critters no bigger than a few centimeters long. But what if I told you that we have the optical technology to be able to shoot both wide angle and macro or tight shots using the same lens? And it doesn't stop there either. This one lens will remove all other major issues with using dome ports by restoring the three to four stops of corner sharpness that we lose with typical glass domes. And additionally, it will remove all optical close focus limitations on both the wide end and the tight end of the lens, all while maintaining a constant aperture of f1.8? If someone said this to me a few years ago, I would have laughed at them. What I have just described is quite literally the perfect lens, which as we all know is an impossible task, but here it is. This is the Nordicam wide angle conversion port. Now, I just wanna say that this is not a sponsored video and I bought this at the full retail price. It's expensive, but this revolutionary piece of kit does exactly this. Make no mistake, this is not just a window for my camera lens to shoot through. It's a highly advanced optical tool. Behind this conversion port can sit a range of standard zoom lenses, such as the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8, the Canon 28 to 80, and a variety of other Sony, Canon, and Nikon lenses. These lenses themselves are nothing crazy, and they certainly would not be appropriate underwater lenses in their own right. I personally use the Sigma 18 to 35 behind mine majority of the time, and this conversion port will convert that 18 to 35 Super 35 image to a full frame equivalent focal length of 11 millimeters on the wide end to just over 50 millimeters on the tight end. And this can be shifted to slightly tighter with different lenses like the Canon 28 to 80. This optical conversion is mind blowingly done in a way that heightens the lens sharpness and renders the image with three to four stops sharper corners than standard dome ports can. It also overhauls the lens and allows it to focus right on the front of the dome port 
at both the wide end and the tight end with a close focus distance of zero, which is just insane. I've never experienced anything like this, particularly as almost all other wide angle lenses have a close focus distance of around 20 to 30 centimeters. In simple terms, this conversion port allows both ultra close focus wide angle shots and macro shooting to be undertaken on the one lens system and renders those images with extreme sharpness in both the center and the corners. And there's no iris or aperture limitations either as this is all regulated by the lens behind the port, which in my case grants a constant aperture of f1.8. This is truly a revolutionary piece of kit and I can honestly say that it has drastically enhanced my cinematography, not only allowing me to capture a variety of different shots for each scene, much the same way I would while shooting topside and being able to build out a sequence with wide, medium and tight shots, but it also allows me to be prepared for any eventuality. Anyways, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.